here with David Burroughs. We're going to take a look at his past picks. We're going to start with Biogen and see how that one's performed for us. A little bit to the downside. Yeah. So um, Biogen is, is of course, in the, in the biotech space. Um, we are big believers in focusing in key themes. And for about three years, the biotech sector was one of the leading groups in the market. And we had a number of large cap positions there. We stay in positions as long as they work and we run stop losses in and behind. When we got to July of last year, biotech as a group rolled over with the market. We got stopped out of Biogen uh, at uh, uh, $308, $310, um, uh, which, is, which is our process. It had a big, a tough day and we make an exit and, and move on. And so when markets go through corrections as an active manager, we'll go through periods where we are in sectors and then we'll move to the sidelines and, and move to what's next. And in, in that case, and in the next one, both cases got stopped out in July of last year. All right, so the next one is uh, X, sorry, and XP semiconductors at NXPI. Yeah, so NASDAQ. same thing. Market went through correction last summer. Semiconductor group uh, uh, broke down. NXP, we sold at $96.14 uh, and, and moved on. I will say that semiconductors are a pretty good sized piece of our portfolio today as technology is really making a nice turn. Now, what, what is it behind that technology turn? And what was it, like in the summer when it sold off, did you just get sucked down with everything else? Is there a fundamental story here that you uh, like, obviously? No, I mean, the, the issue is, yeah, when, when the market sold off last summer, much like it did in January and February this year, both cases were fairly deep, you know, short-term corrections. Uh, and what's interesting is in a secular bull market, which we believe we're in, leadership or the things that work tend to be persistent because there's some change that's causing it. Uh, and of course, there's a secular change taking place in, in technology. Technology was leading going into both of these corrections and has led coming out of both of them. Uh, and so it's very important. Semiconductors are probably the most basic building block that there is today. It used to be fo focused on copper. Um, and so it's important that if you look at the way that the semiconductors as a group are behaving, and you can look at XSD, which is a semiconductor ETF, um, they've really rallied nicely off the lows, and there's a number of them that, that are leading the charge, and Avago, AVGO would be one, another would be NVIDIA, NVDA. All right, last pick, Starbucks. Now, this one's done pretty good for you. Yeah, well, consumer has been our biggest waiting for the last two and a half years, and continues to be today. And Starbucks is one that has had lots of little pullbacks along the way, but stayed technically sound. It's had a nice consolidation recently. And whether you look at Starbucks or McDonald's or Home Depot, all of these in the consumer discretionary group look really attractive. Now, you start talking about a name like Starbucks in particular, there's an interesting uh, dynamic going on there between who their competitors are. And traditionally, McDonald's wouldn't have been their competitor, now, but everyone's in the same fight now. Starbucks, actually, I quite like their, uh, their sandwiches. If I have to work here late, that's using my dinner. They, they have been amazingly innovative. You know, the fact that they have so many people with a Starbucks card or number in their phone for payment system, the fact that they've got pre-ordering that you can go and pick up your drink, the fact that they have made a move into food and done very well with that, the fact that they've started with micro-sized stores uh, for different types of markets. They've been very innovative. They've got lots of different levers that they can pull to manage the profitability in the business. And it's amazing that everybody's happy paying five bucks for a coffee. <laughs> the resilience, I guess, and we talk about the American consumer as well, the resilience there, the theory being that and perhaps in Canada we get a little more upset about low energy prices, but in the States it should be a boon. It should put more money in people's pockets than they should be able to spend on this consumer discretionary. Listen, you know, the consumer is alive and well in the U.S. They've done a good job of deleveraging. Uh, you know, low energy prices have made a difference for them. And, uh, and if you look at it, the most resilient sector in the last three years has been consumer discretionary. It continues to look really, really attractive. All right, fascinating stuff. We're going to be back after this short break. Our number, of course, 1-855-326-6266. Give us a call. We're talking North American Large Caps with David Burroughs.